Well, welcome Facebook Live. Uh, this is the Biden Botus weekly Facebook Live episode, and we're airing at a special time this week where we normally come to you in the afternoon. Uh, this week we have a special morning edition um, because our featured guest this morning is a college football coach, and football coaches just don't have a lot of free time in the afternoon. Um, uh, as you know, the Bound and Bonus Law Offices have been doing these Facebook Live episodes since about five months now, since we started spending more time at home with COVID, and we're just trying to address issues related to COVID that are impacting each of us and our families. Um, we, we ask you to be proactive, to, to get out, find out what's going on and how you can best um, how you can best deal with with these new um, situations that we're all encountering. Uh, today, I am just thrilled uh, to have a very special guest, my friend and the head football coach at the University of North Alabama, my alma mater, uh, <laughs> the, the place where I met my wife, Kay. Uh, we have Coach Chris Willis with us today. Coach, welcome to the uh, Bound and Bodas Facebook Live. Brad, I appreciate you having me on. And, uh, anytime I can get in front of a camera, or whether it's news camera, podcast, or anything, to share a little bit about our program in North Alabama, it's always a good thing. And uh, I appreciate you having me on. Well, Coach, this is just, it's a great opportunity. So many of our viewers, um, families with uh, uh, children that are playing in sports right now or trying to participate in sports, Fans of college football that, that want to know what's going on. And, uh, uh, of course, just friends of the University of North Alabama that are anxious to see you and, and hear from you. Uh, Coach, I know you, but if you would, just share a little bit about your background with our viewers, um, where you got started and uh, okay. your experience at UNA and, and where things are today. Well, uh Back in 1999, I started out as a graduate assistant at Delta State University, a, a Division II school at the time. It still is a Division II school, then the Gulf South Conference, the league that we used to be in. Uh, I started under a head coach by the name of Steve Campbell, who is the, now the current head coach at South Alabama. While on staff there, I also met Mark Hudspeth, who, as we all know, became the head coach here in North Alabama in 2002, and that's kind of my – connection and way of getting to the Florence and Shoals area. He brought me on, hired me on the staff uh, in 02. Uh, I worked various positions from director of football ops to offense to defense to travel coordinator, recruiting coordinator. Uh, moved kind of up just like anybody else, just kind of moved up the rankings there. And uh, I want to say he left after the 08 season, went to Mississippi State. Terry Bowden came in in the 09 through 011. I'm trying to think of my years here. Um, I was fortunate enough to stay on at the time. I mean, he, he asked me to be a part of his staff, and I worked for three seasons under Coach Bowden. And as we know, uh, Coach Wallace came back in 2012, came out of, I think, of his second retirement to be the head football coach here, and uh, he, he hired me as a defensive coordinator. I was very fortunate I, I to be at one school as long as I've, had, I've been. Um, came to D.C. in 12 was a defensive coordinator for him all the way through the 2016 season, where we all know we played for a national championship. We were fortunate to win, I think, about four Gulf South Conference, I mean, excuse me, four uh, conference titles at the time. And um, I took over as head coach in 2017. That was our last year of Division II, 18 and 19 were our first two years in Division I. And of course, now we're in 2020. Um, if we can get things kicked off October the 3rd, I guess we'll be able to count this year as our third year of Division One, and, uh, you know, kind of see where we go from there. But, yeah, I, I, I arrived here in 2002 and been here quite some time now. Well, I have to say I'm a little bit jealous. I only got to spend four years at, at the beautiful University of North Alabama uh, back in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, when Coach Wayne Grubb was the head football coach. Yeah. Yeah. UNA football was a lot different then. Of course, it was Division Two, and um, the big rivals were Jacksonville and Troy, yeah. and um, they made their way up to Division One. And it's so exciting now to see UNA playing Division One football. Coach, you um, you also have a lovely wife Tara and three young boys, um, and. You speak today not only as a head football coach, but as a husband 
and a father of young men that are participating in youth sports. And yeah. with today's world, uh, it's real important to, to include that in your perspective. Um, so coach, what I really want to discuss today is how things are different. Um, just, just if you would, we'll have some specific questions, but kind of give us an overview of how the college football landscape is different for you this year. Well, obviously, with, with dealing with the COVID virus and, and going through the things we're going with there, you know, back what started out in March, April, and May is not the same as it is today. Um, it was a trial run when we reported uh, in July 6th. We brought our players in July 6th. What we knew then and what we were dealing with then, is it's just totally different today. The way we go about the way we test. Uh, now we do the cardiology test where we test their heart. Uh, we we put them through a number of uh, different things, but it's, it's been difficult. And, and, and I say that honestly, and, and you know, they've shut down recruiting. We, we call it the dead period. Uh, and I know you may ask me some of these things later on, but uh, we're not able to leave off campus to go to other campuses, high school campuses to recruit kids. Everything is done by Zoom and, and video. And um, we've had to change the way we meet. You know, we go into meetings here. Uh, we can't meet as a whole unit now. We have to break up in different segments. Wait from the weight room to meeting room, the way we practice. Uh, we, we used to lift in three weight groups. Now we lift in five weight groups. Wow. Um, our position meetings now, you have to wear the mask and be six feet apart. But now you may have to conduct two position meetings with one group because you can't get them all in, in one room. And so uh, it, it's, it, you know, it's we've had to, you know, as far as go back is this budget and watching how you spend money because are we going to play? Are we not going to play? Uh, financially, there's going to be some things that, that take place. And so you could about check every box. Uh, you really could. I, yeah. From the way we prepare for practice, the way we're going to prepare for meetings, the weight room, the way we recruit now. Uh, well, I haven't been on a high school campus um, in quite some time. You know, all this wow. started out, I think we stopped spring football and we went right into the March. I think when the NCAA tournament started canceling. And so I didn't see my players until July 6th. And uh, I haven't been on a high school campus in quite some time. I hope they lift that. I think we're going to carry that all the way through the rest of this month. I don't know what's going to happen in October, um, but I know the high school coaches and those kids as well would like to see us come back around. I mean, we're doing the best we can. We still do the sending out the letters, the phone calls, but uh, it's just not the same. And uh, just, you know, with my own team, I go back to the preparation, everyday practice and meetings. Uh, there's just a lot of guidelines and you, we have to enforce. Uh, you keep in mind, these are 18, 19, 20, 21 old year old guys. And listen, they should do everything we ask them to do and should do it the right way. And 99% of the time they do. But when you coach 120 and then you throw in managers, trainers, coaches, all this personnel, you look up and there's 130, 40 people uh, involved. Sorry, my light went out on me. That's all right. Um, it, it just, it, there's a, you know, are you doing the right things? Have you showed up to your test today? Hey, where's your mask? Don't enter the building without the mask. Just a lot of different things. And uh, we, we, here at North Alabama, have navigated through it enough now that we've got a good handle on it. We've got a good plan in place, and it seems to be flowing really good. Our numbers have gone down a lot over this period of time, and I think we just we've got a good handle on it. And I think it's a credit to the administration, the university as a whole, President Kitts, and just being able to get our team back here July six. We we didn't know what we were doing. It's like getting on a bicycle on July six, and we're, we each week was a learning. And we've just gotten a lot better with it, and we've somewhat figured it out. I don't think we've got all the answers, but we figured it out somewhat. You know, I do think President Kitts deserves a lot of guidance. President Kitts, uh, president of the University of North Alabama, has done just a wonderful job, I believe, navigating the entire university uh, through these strange times. And, uh, you know, your response uh, to my somewhat open-ended question uh, is just – great evidence of where we are today. There's just so many issues. Um, uh, Coach, I, I'm not going to put you in the tough situation of answering this question, but I'll give you my opinion. I think most college kids are safer on campus, particularly football players, than a lot of them are in their own communities. Um, not, not that they're parents and, and they aren't you know, taken care of well at home, but I know the type uh, oversight that you provide and most college football coaches provide. 
But, you know, Coach, and I won't ask you to answer the all-important question of should we be playing college football, but you're a father. You have three young men, three three young boys participating in athletics. And uh, I'll share with our viewers, and I asked your permission beforehand, but you have experienced COVID personally. You, you made it through COVID. Tell us a little bit about your experience with COVID and then your perspective on your own boys' participation in youth sports. Yeah, I mean, I go back to the day that I received the news. Uh, I want to say it was the last week of May, uh, first week of June, somewhere in that time frame, which if you go back to that time, we're still trying to figure it out. Uh, I didn't, we don't have all the answers. You see what's on TV, you hear from the doctors, and you take the advice from uh, the COVID guidelines that are put out at the time. I remember back when I had it, when you did get the virus, it was a 14-day uh, you had to be sidelined, quarantined uh, until you were cleared. Now, when you test positive, it's 10 days. The, uh, the get person that come in contact has the 14 day now. So things that were, you know, were a little bit different back then, but you didn't have a lot of answers. We're just trying to figure it out. You know, and the first thing that comes to mind, and, you know, let's just be honest, is I, I was nervous. I, I didn't know how to, you know, they tell me I've got the test. I remember, uh, excuse me, tested positive and I come home and I tell Tara and my wife and, you know, what's next? You know, we're, we're fixing to figure this thing out. And, uh, you know, you start thinking about all the symptoms. They tell you about, you know, you're not going to have a shortage of bread. Am I going to take on all of that? And, um, you know, during my time, I, you know, I was out for about 15, 16 days. Probably four to five of those days, I did have symptoms. Um, I never ex experienced the shortage of breath. I, I did have some fever. I had a cough, I had sore throat. I had symptoms. But it was symptoms that we've all pretty much for the most part experienced with the flu or something else. Uh, I was nervous uh, at that time. But as it moved forward and I started figuring this thing out, I would sit there and read on it every day like anybody else would. And I did my part of trying to stay away from my family the best I could, even though I'm isolated in my house and, uh, and I can't really go anywhere. And um, and I was nervous for my wife and kids at that time because I was pretty much in my mindset was, OK, you guys are going to get it. It yeah. seemed to be that contagious to the point, uh, but Tara never got it. The kids never got it. She tested negative. Um, you know, I, just the way it worked out for us doesn't mean that works out for everybody. I, I, I tell everybody I feel like I had a mild case of it, but I don't know what that, what does that mean. You know, I mean, maybe that seems to be the thing. I, I mean, we've had players here get it. They don't even show symptoms. I, you know, right. we can get into the different types, but uh, I had symptoms. I had it. And I was worried back then really about it. And I'm not saying I'm not worried today about it. Um, I, I do everything that's asked. We do everything from the washing of the hands. We wash our clothes pretty pretty much every day. We're going to have masks on all the time when we leave the house. So we do everything on our part that's been asked of us to do. And we do the same thing up here with our players. And so, yes, to tell you, I don't worry you know, about my wife and kids and going to school. I do. Uh, and I feel and I trust in the school systems that they're doing and they've got a good plan in place like we do here at UNA. And, and everybody's everybody's trying to do it the right way. And we're all trying to piggyback off each other to see, you know, we just we take bits and pieces from this school and that school. And sometimes you see across the country, there are reports that schools had to shut down for two weeks or this happened. And, you know, for one reason or another, those things do happen. But I go back to your statement a while ago uh, I do believe if we could keep everybody on campus living here all the time uh, under me uh, in our little bubble uh, I think our players they feel really safe about what we do here um, like my wife and kids well, they felt safe about what we did inside my home I just think if everybody will do their part and educate themselves uh, on, on what this virus can do it is a serious uh, and obviously we've had deaths and 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 it's something we do need to pay attention to and I pay attention to it every day I watch it, I read the numbers, I pay attention because I've got 130 people here I've got to keep an eye on. And, um, I, you know, I'm very blessed that I didn't have it as, uh, as, as bad as some people have had it. Um, you know, we'll see how it plays out as far as, you know, you, you hear that if you get it once, it's hard to get it the second time. I don't think there's really big reports out there, of many multiple cases of it. I hope it stays that way, but I still think it's just part of it. We're learning this whole thing process. Here we are fixing to come back around in November, December, and January when it all kind of got going, when, when the cold weather, is, is that going to play a factor in all this? So uh, I just think biggest thing is educate yourself and, 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 and don't be that guy that says, ah, today I'm going to go to Walmart and without a mask and I'm going to come home today. And you know what? I'm not worried about washing my hands. I, 
I still think you got to do all of that. Uh, I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't do all of that. And so, uh, but I, I do take it still serious today. Now, have I loosened up a little bit on, you know, I, yes, I have. in the fact that I've had it, I, I've dealt with it in my way and my family, but um, I'm still one of these too, though. I've got to move about. I've got to go on to work. I've got to get kids into school. I do feel like we got to get back to some normalcy. We've got to get back to one day like we used to live. And I hopefully we're not there yet. I hope we get back there, but I understand that we're trying our best across this country to do that. Whether you're for or against uh, going to school or not going to school, I, I, I respect anybody's decision. If they want to stay home and go online, that's their, I understand it. We don't know everybody's background. We don't understand at home how they're doing things and coping with financial, the side of that and, in you know, what resources they have. Um, I know what I can do with me and my family. And so I, you know, I, I trust right now the way the schools are set up here locally in our Shoals area. I really think they're doing a good job. So, Coach, you're a father. You have young men participating in uh, athletics. What are you looking at and, and what should other parents be looking at to make sure that the program is being run safely and that you know, our young men are protected and safe? Well, first off, I would hope parents around the country uh, in the high school level, especially, and it doesn't matter what level, but it, especially at the high school level, that you've sat down with the head coach and you've sit, and you've heard his plan. He should have a plan. It's been passed down from his superintendent, his principals, and they should have a plan in place. But I think, you know, and I'm sure they get it by email because we can't meet in large groups. But read those emails, understand those emails, see if you like what you, you're reading. There are some parents that we do some things up here. We, it, we, we've gotten past it, but they didn't like at the front end what we were doing. And we addressed those things and we got it fixed. Uh, one thing right now that you've seen in the news, it's not just testing positive. It's the, uh, I can't think of the name of it. I'm just going blank, but it's the, the part that affects your, your, your heart. And, uh, you know, we, here's how we do it. We, we, we go through a process here. If you test positive, you got to go home and you got to be isolated for 10 days or you're isolated here on campus, depending on if you live by yourself or you live in an apartment. Uh, after those 10 days up, you got to go through our health services and go through a number of checkpoints. Then when you return from me, I send you to a cardiologist. We're going to make sure Josh Penny's our head trainer. We're going to get an echo right out of the gate and we're going to check your blood levels and we're going to see if anything shows up. And if it does, then the next step is go to get the ultrasound. And we've already had some guys that go through all that, but everybody we've had, and I'm only speaking for me, have cleared and didn't pass on all of that. So right. my players feel the sense of, hey, they've got our back. Man, they, they're doing everything they can do from the, not just the testing. We test weekly here. We're testing weekly. Uh, we're doing the cardio test. So our guys feel like, you know, hey, they've got a plan in place. I would hope each high school has something like that. I can't speak for every high school. I don't know. I know where my kids go to school and I feel really good about what they're doing, but uh, I would hope every school's got something in place. Um, excuse me, sorry, my light again. That's uh, all right. That's in, going in place that they feel comfortable. If a parent doesn't feel comfortable about it, they need to go and, and they need to sit down and they need to express that. Um, obviously the biggest number one concern is this, what happens on the weekends? I have that same issue here. You know, we practice on Saturday mornings but I don't see my guys again until Monday. But we have to educate them on being in large groups, uh, attending different events that, you know, if you see around the country, there's still things going on. You look up, there's a big pool party, there's a house party, there's this bar's open. That's, and so we, we make sure that they understand, hey, you're doing all of this to, to do it right, to give us a chance to play football. Don't be the guy that goes out there and messes that up. And for the most part, um, I feel like our guys are abiding by those things. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say it's perfect. We do, you know, when you got 120 athletes, there's always four or five or six that, that think they can go outside that line. Um, that's the tough part in a college world. We've we got them around us pretty much all the time, but sometimes there's those times off over the weekend. In high school, the good thing about that is you they're coming home to a parent. Somebody's taking care of those young men under their roof. And so I would hope within that household, they're abiding by the same guidelines and rules we do here at a university when you bring them on campus. So, Yeah, but Coach, and I think this just underscores the point we, we made earlier. While they're on campus, while they're at the University of North Alabama, uh, you are keeping an eye on them. Uh, yes. uh, there's a medical staff. Uh, there, there's a trainer available. Um, uh, 
and, and I'll just give a plug for the University of North Alabama as a whole, classrooms are small. You have direct communications with your professors. Um, parents, if you're looking for a great place to send yeah. your kids, I just can't say enough good things about UNA and the University of North Alabama and the atmosphere there. Um, and the entire Shoals area, Chris, when, when I was in school at UNA, and even when you started, it wasn't the coolest area to be, but boy, the <laughs> Shoals area, yeah. uh, there's a lot going on at this point. A lot of neat restaurants, um, places to listen to music. Yeah. I encourage people to visit if, if they haven't been. Um, just to break for a second for our viewers, so this is uh, the Bond and Bodice Facebook Live. We've been doing these episodes weekly. Um, uh, since uh, back in March sometime when, when we first started spending more time at home and in front of our computer screens and we're doing these weekly updates just to provide information to our viewers um, about all the many, many issues related to this challenge our country is facing. Um, I do want to include the message. COVID is causing financial problems for a lot of people. If you need help. We encourage you to reach out in advance. Our offices are all providing free initial consultations to the qualified attorney at this point. We can do the consultation from the comfort and safety of your own home or office. We'll do it over the phone or by video so that you don't have to put yourself at risk by coming into an office. But be proactive. As with football, as with so many of the issues we've discussed, get as much information as you can. Communicate with other people and uh, know that there are people that can help you. Um, Coach Willis, I, I want to give you a chance to respond to some of the questions that are coming in. We're getting some from Twitter and we're getting some from Facebook here. Um, and, and some of these I'm not sure that you can uh, respond to directly based upon your area of expertise, but I'm gonna give you a chance here. The first question is, um, what are the COVID requirements for team sports in Alabama? I guess it's directed towards high school sports. Are you familiar with what the um, Alabama High School Association is doing right now? I, I, not really. To be honest with you, I'm so wrapped up in what we do on the collegiate level. Um, I'm not really sure what they're doing at the high school level. I, just dealing with my son playing middle school football in the seventh grade at, at Florence, they seem very similar. I, I can say that. I don't know if they're, you know, because of finances, I don't know if they're allowed to test weekly. Uh, I, I don't think high schools are doing that, but I think they're taking it on case by case. So if you start showing symptoms, I think they're doing the temp check as they report. Um, and if you pass the temp check with no symptoms, it's like kind of move on. Uh, I, and then listen, and, and I, I could be wrong. This may not be at every high school. Um, and I think one, they take it on as it happens case by case. And once again, it goes back to, can you afford the weekly testing? Um, here, we're able to do that right now and we're able to do the cardio. And so it's just, I think it's different. I, I think Alabama high schools have got guidelines out there that standard guidelines, I have seen that before. They, everybody has to do something of those, whether it's temp checks and you know uh, social distancing with the mask, the whole thing. But each high school probably has to take it on a little differently because I have spoken to uh, plenty of high school coaches who are just, they're on a different schedule. They've had to shut down. Good friend that coaches up in Tennessee, he had to shut down for two weeks, but the other schools around him are rolling on like normal. So he's had to adjust after two weeks, they'll come back and kick things back in. So I, I really, at this point in time, I think it's school to school based off what they're able to do. Yeah, I, I think that's exactly right from what I've been able to see. Uh, um, uh, for instance, down here in Birmingham, uh, I think I think it's still Alabama's winning his high school coach of all time, Buddy Anderson yeah. at Xavier. He and his wife tested positive for COVID um, uh, some months back, and they had to shut things down for a period of time. But um, uh, they've recovered. They're both doing well, thankfully. And, and yeah. uh, uh, Vestavia is playing football again. Uh, of course, it's a week-to-week -week thing. We really yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, we, we just got to be able to react and use the best information we have, as I know you and your staff are doing. So you addressed this a little bit earlier um, on a general perspective, but the question is, what can I do to make sure my child is safe? Uh, what are you and Terry doing with your boys to make sure they're safe? 
Well, listen, as you probably know, by talking to Tara, you know, we're, we're, we're out of the house all the time. I mean, we're at the little league ball field last night. Uh, two of them had baseball. One came from football practice to baseball. So we're, we're staying active. We're out there. But now I can tell you this, what we're doing and we're following the guidelines that are put out there. I really think a lot of times people, they don't really read all that and they don't follow into it. Um, we, we wear masks. Okay. Now I'll, I'll tell you this, we do. And I don't know if this is right. I, I mean, I kind of way we do things here. If you're outside and you got the good distance between somebody, the six we, we may pull our mask off. We may not wear it. Uh, anytime we go indoors right now as a family. So my kids, every morning, we do a mask check before they walk out the door. They get dressed for school. After they do everything, brush your teeth. As they're walking out the door, where's your mask? Okay, where's your mask? And they've all got it on. So they know once they enter their school, they've got to put it on. We tell them throughout the day, anytime you have an opportunity to go to the bathroom and wash your hands, please do so. We gave them... All of them in their backpacks got sanitizer and put that on. And I think the schools, too, have got that out. Like, if you come down my hallway, we've got it set up where you can put sanitizer on uh, pretty much every door you walk in and uh, going in and out. And so uh, I know we're doing that with them. We talk to them about every time they enter the house from coming outside. I don't care if it's just outside in the front yard with the next door neighbor. We make them wash their hands. And so... Uh, you know, we're doing everything I feel like everybody else should be doing or is doing. I mean, we, 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 they're young, you know, when you're talking a 12 year old, 11 year old, and obviously my seven year old, who is the hardest one to, to follow the guidelines. Uh, but we, we, we stay on them about all of this and, and with the importance of it. They, the oldest two, I know they understand it. The young one, he still, he just follows the lead of the big brothers, which they're setting examples for him. But, uh, Man, between me and Tara, we stay on them pretty hard. And we, but as a parent, you've got to do it too. It's kind of like riding down the road. Don't tell your kids to put on the seatbelt, but you don't have yours on. Okay. Well, you put your seatbelt on too. So if we're going to ask our kids to do that, we need to have our mask on. We need, if we have to run out to Walmart, you know, have these items in your car and make sure you're able to put it on your hand and put your mask on and show them that you're doing it. I mean, it's like everything else. I mean, I'm asking 120 players to do it. I've got to lead by example. I have to do it at home as well. Well, excellent advice. Set a good example for your kids and then watch them personally to make sure they're doing the right thing. Uh, and I should make the point here. Uh, we've mentioned Chris's coach's wife, Tara, several times. Tara Willis is a uh, office manager for our uh, office in Florence, Alabama. Been with us for a long time, I guess, since y'all first came to Florence. I want to say since about oh two, and that, and she's the real coach at home. So let's just get, <laughs> I'm the coach here; she's the coach there. Well, she's um she's really something special, and it's been great because as each of your boys were born, and um, yeah, as she was just getting back to work, and I get to see them in her office, whether it be in a crib or um, toddling around in her office. Um, she is she is a She's an awesome person, and you know, you, you talked about how hectic your life is right now, Coach, with little league practice and football practice. I, I just hate to sound like an old guy, but I've told Tara this a number of times. Enjoy it; you will miss it so much. My yeah. boys, we, we had so much fun, and, and my daughter watching them in youth sports, and my daughter went played some college basketball. Um, but they're all beyond that now, and. Boy, I'd give anything to go back to those days, as hectic as they were. Yeah, I've heard that. I've been told that quite a bit, and we do. We try to cherish every minute of it. We we love doing it, and we it's, it's a root. It's a pretty much an everyday routine for us. We know somebody's got to go somewhere. We all try to. That's one thing I tell my kids. I, you know, a lot of times he don't want to get the oldest one. Don't want to watch the youngest one play. Or the youngest one don't want to go to his prime. Hey guys, we're all gonna support each other. Let's all be there as much as we can, and so. Uh, it's been a fun, fun little ride on, on all these uh, the sports teams we've been on, and we've had a, we've been very blessed in this area. It's a really good area of a lot of really good coaches that work with these youth players, and uh, it's been fun. Yeah. it's it's a special time, and I encourage I encourage parents to just relish the time they have and and not bemoan it. Um, so, important question for you and A fans. Tell us how COVID has affected UNA's schedule this year. Well, we'll go back to, you know, I reported in July 6 with the football team, and we had a full schedule. We had 11 games on schedule. Everything's a go, okay? And uh, we report we report July 6, but we start camp like on August the 3rd, 4th, okay? Now, 
we have our team meeting. The AD comes in, Mark Linder, he addresses the team. We're getting ready to, you know, we're excited. We're ready to get things kicked off. But as any player or any coach, we're sitting around and there's the social media coming out. The Big Ten may cancel. What's the SEC going to do? What's the ACC going to do? You start seeing all these reports. Uh, is there going to be a football season? You know, if you remember when we reported the 1st of August, there was still a lot of that going on. Right. Our players had a lot of questions and, and, and concerns, and I, I don't blame them. But we did as a coach. So we kind of, we start practice. We get in about a day, maybe two days of it. And you, I think but right about the end, somewhere in there, I think the Big Ten canceled. Okay. And then you start seeing all these other conferences cancel. And now it's down to like five conferences just within my league. And so my players came up here. I've got a unity council of older guys, guys that's been around the team for some time, they're the leaders of the team. And they came to my office and said, Coach, we, we, I mean, we're just concerned. Why, we feel like we're out here practicing and we're not really sure uh, are we going to have a season or what, what is the NCAA saying? And so I, I listened to their concerns and I decided, you know what, we're going to have a meeting. We're going we're gonna to let you guys tell us what's bothering you. We're going to send it back to the NCAA and the commissioner. Uh, and number one, they were worried about their eligibility. Coach, what if we play a game or two and then the season's called off and I'm a senior, do I lose my eligibility? At that time, the NCAA hadn't put anything out. Uh, coach, I mean, we, we want to be able to play uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 games. I mean, are we going to be able to play that full schedule? And it, it just what happens if the old line has to go into quarantine that week? Are we going to get to play that game? Just a lot of things that we didn't have answers to. Now, there's no – listen, I'm not going to hide the fact, and I haven't hidden the fact that I've been upset with the NCAA, me along with a lot of coaches in this country. Um, the lack of leadership has just not been – I mean, it, they put out all these standard things for you to go by, but they don't answer your questions. We didn't know the eligibility question. Are we going to play football? What they've done is they've passed it over to conferences. They've made the SEC – presidents and commissioners come together and make decisions. The same, look what's going on with the Big Ten. And and so instead of them coming out and saying, this is what we're going to do, they pass it on to everybody else. Uh, it's been very disappointing. So we sit down and we start sending these, you know, all these questions to the NCAA and I'm, I'm our commissioner of our conference. And we start getting the answers. Now that we know that the players, they get a full year, they, basically they, this year doesn't count the towards eligibility. So they get a whole nother year back, which is great. But now that gets into something we can talk about down the road here in a minute about uh, how that, that's going to affect recruiting. Because uh, you're still limited with the number of scholarships you've got. So if you decide to keep 15 seniors on your team, are you going to be able to bring any true freshmen in? It, it gets into all that. But I go back to the scheduling. We had all of that going on and not sure what we were going to do. But slowly but surely, here goes teams dropping. We had Virginia Tech on schedule. They decided to go all conference plus one. So what did that do? That dropped us. Uh, our conference shut it down. That's about five or six games that we lost. The conference puts out the, uh, a deal that, hey, you guys can play four games. Now, people go, why would you do such? Uh, you know, why would you just play four games? And Well, listen, you know, I met with my team about that, and I went over the things. I said, guys, listen, there will be a four-game schedule. We'll push it back to October. We'll play one week, take a week off, play one. I said, Think about what would we be doing anyway? We would be lifting weights and practicing against each other pretty much every day. Let's use these four games to get better. Let's use it as exhibition, so to speak. I hate using that word because you want to go in and try to win these games. But, but also there's the financial side of it. Here's an opportunity to play three out of these four teams or 85 scholarship programs. There were bowl eligible teams that play in the FBS level. Liberty made a bowl. Uh, Southern Miss made a bowl game. And then obviously BYU. Uh, and, and some of these, uh, BYU's already played, Southern Miss has already played a game, and Liberty's playing their first game this week. But they're, they're going to pay us an amount of money to come to their location and play them. And it's money that we need. I, I can tell you, if we don't play football, we don't play any games at all, we're going to take a financial hit here. We're going to take one anyway, but we're really going to take one if we don't play any games. And at a school like North Alabama, that's, that's tough. Uh, it's tough anywhere. I mean, you can say it's not tough in Alabama and Auburn, but it, it, they'll take a hit, too, in ticket sales and, 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 and other things. But we are, too. Ticket sales may not be the biggest selling thing here all the time, but uh, these money guarantee games are. It helps, you know, it helps other programs. Uh, men's basketball and, and our football program, a lot of times, help other programs here at the university. It helps jobs. And so we, need, we needed to play. 
we really needed to play these games. And we haven't kicked off yet. I know it's October 3rd. I, I knock on wood all the time, hoping we're still going to get to play these games. But also meeting with the players, sitting down with those guys. Hey, I wanted them to want to play. If they didn't want to play and they just, you know, we were going to play it, then I, they looked at it and go, Coach, it only helps us down the road to get better. Let's get out here and play these games. I get it. There's the financial side of it. But it's also – Listen, there's also the mental aspect of it. As a player, think about what they're going through. There's this uncertainty. Am I ever going to play again? Are we going to play? How's this going to work out? And, you know, since these decisions were made back in July and August, things have changed. As it looks today, it looks like we're kind of getting back to some type of normalcy. And football is about to, you know, the SEC kicks off on the 26th. I think we're all waiting on that because they seem to be the, the, big, the big dog that everybody's waiting on. And now if they don't kick off on the 26th, I would be concerned for us moving after at the week following that. So uh, I think we're all paying attention. I think it's good to see football has gotten back somehow. I mean, it's not everybody, um, but there's football being played. And um, it's different, obviously, with no fans. And it's not what we're accustomed to. But right now, everything's different. Things change every day uh, in the sports world. Speaking of things change every day, and I don't, I know you've had a busy morning, but I believe I heard on the radio coming in that the Big Ten has announced that they're going to start back up and um, they're going to okay. pick back up with football. So just to clarify, at this point, UNA has four games on its schedule then? So we've got four games. We play October the 3rd. It's a Saturday. We play at Liberty. Uh, we go up. That's uh, for people to know where Liberty, Liberty used to be in the Big South, but they've moved up. Now they're FBS. They're like Notre Dame. They're independent as far as football goes. Now their their school, uh, their other sports play in the Big South. So our basketball program, excuse me, ASUN, they play in the ASUN. They'll I get that confused sometimes. They'll play each other. Um, the former Ole Miss coach, you know, is uh, Hugh Freeze is the head coach at Liberty. So that's a familiar name and face. The, we'll take a week off. Now, when I mean a week off, we won't play a week. And we did that because what if we do get hit with COVID? What if, you know, playing these bigger schools with 85 scholarships too, it gives us some recovery time. And so we'll take a week. We'll have a bye week, but we'll, we'll practice and get ready for the next game, which will be at home game against Jacksonville State, which will be the only FCS opponent we have. That's an in-state school. It was easy for both schools to make that happen. So they'll travel here to play us. For some reason, I think we have two weeks off. I'm not looking at it right now. And then we go to Hattiesburg to play Southern Mississippi. And then I think we got a week off, and then we travel out to play uh, Brigham Young, BYU, uh, at their place on the November. The, we play uh, Southern Miss, I think, November the 7th, Brigham Young, November 21st. And then I don't know, and you may know this, Brad, but here at the University of North Alabama, like most schools, um, once we get to the Thanksgiving holidays, everybody's kind of going to finish out the remainder of the semester online. All right. Everybody will have to be off campus. So it kind of it times up just right. We'll go home for Thanksgiving pretty much through Christmas break. And uh, we'll see what the spring holds. They're, they're, they're meeting today, the NCAA. They're having uh, one of their 50th meetings they've had over this period of time. And we'll see if they make any decisions. But supposedly they're trying to put together some kind of spring model of a football season for us in this level of play. Uh, I'm mixed feelings on that. That's another topic for another day. But we'll see what happens. I think, once again, it's too early to sit here and talk about something that may or may not happen. But uh, they may put a seven-game spring football schedule together just with our conference teams only. Because if you, there's only te two teams within our conference, us and Campbell University, that are playing four games. The rest of them decided not to play. Coach, I can't tell you how exciting it is just to hear – UNA playing BYU uh, and a team <laughs> like that. And uh, I know uh, probably creates a little bit different perspective for you getting ready for a team like that. But boy, what what great, uh, yeah. great thing for UNA and the UNA football and, and the university. So let's see. Next question here. Um, uh, are there different rules for practices than games? You haven't started up games yet. Well, at the very beginning, there were different rules for practice. Uh, we haven't played a game yet, but we, now we're kind of getting – we get ahead of time. Like, Liberty's sending us what they want us to do on their end, um, and, and it's pretty much what everybody's doing around the country. Um, it's pretty much the same. There's not a lot different. I do know before we arrive to play a football game, I can tell you this, we have to get tested 72 hours prior to arrival, and we have to show that everybody who boards that plane or bus – showed a negative test result 72 hours before kickoff. 
And so like every Wednesday morning, like for instance, Liberty, I think we're taking, you take 70 players and then your personnel, about 110 people are going to board a plane out of Muscle Shoals to fly up to uh, Virginia. So all 110 will have to have a negative test result when they get on that plane. And then when we're on the sidelines, we'll have to have our mask. They can't drink out of the same water bottles. Same of the same things you're seeing in here today across the country. Um, now, I, I, you know, I would think that's going to be the same everywhere we go. But, you know, like, again, each state's different. What we're, how we're handling things in Alabama may not be quite the way they're doing it in Virginia. Like, North Carolina's got different standards and guidelines than we do down here. So it depends on where you travel, where you go. It seems like Brigham Young out that way is more like Alabama. I want to say they've kind of – gone to the pretty much what we're doing here. But by the time we kick off, who's to say it had not changed again? So, you know, you, you talked about wearing masks on the sideline. I got a, a, found it amusing during the first uh, couple of weeks of NFL and college football. You, you coaches don't don't have to cover your mouth anymore while you're talking. You've got those masks on. So uh, the referee can't, you know, he may can hear us, but I don't know who's saying what over there. That's right. <laughs> Not that you'd ever say anything, Coach, but <laughs> so, Coach, you know, this this question, I think, is specifically COVID related. But as a parent of um, three young boys who are clearly very good athletes, um, as a parent, what can I do to help my child athlete be successful during this time? Um, but what advice would you give uh, to a parent about helping their kid with uh, athletics now and in general? Well, you know, and every every household is different. Uh, you could come from a single home parent. Uh, you may have both parents there. You may be living with a grandmother. I don't, you know, everybody's different. But the one thing that we try to do, we try in my house, we try to stay on some type of schedule with them. My wife really does a great job with this. Uh, they, they do have their team sports they show up to, and they may have a game or they may have a practice, but when they're not doing any of that, we're very we're big on, hey, get outside and stay active, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, whether it's hitting off the tee. We keep a tee set up in the garage where they can, without a parent, they should be able to go out there and hit off the tee at any point in time. So, you know, at, at the young kid's age, is the main thing is just keeping them active. Don't I know the same old thing where we can sit here and say, you know, I can't get them off the PlayStation. Or I can't get them off their iPad. Well, as a parent, you're in charge of that household. Yeah, get them off of that. We've gotten, well, we limit our, our kids to a um, number of hours throughout a day. Really, right now, during the weekday, they only use it for school. We better not see them. We don't let our kids own any of that during the week. Now, on the weekend, we'll loosen up a little bit, especially if it's raining outside and you can't get out. But Tara, you know, if you ever, I don't know if she's ever, Brad showed you one of her calendars, but like, on Monday, it is mapped out, and uh, I've watched her during the quarantine when we were in lockdown. She had them doing their, her own workout. She had them out there doing sprints and jogging and running and squats, so she had them on a schedule. And um, we go to – everybody's pretty familiar with Rayfield Raglan. He, he teaches uh, kids around the Shoals area and does different classes with them as far as getting them in shape, basketball. I know we sign up for that sometimes, and we take uh, Bo and Cody to that. And uh, – we try to keep them pretty active. You know, they got church on Wednesday nights. That's kind of their break night, I guess you can say. Um, and they got church on Sunday. But pretty much every other day of the week, uh, we, we keep them going. You, you just got to keep them active. You, you got to get them off the electronics. That drives me insane. I, I can't uh, – I just can't. I remember growing up, coming through college, I played them too, you know. But uh, I don't know. It just seems like kids nowadays are just more indoors. They're not uh, – They're not. Uh, we've done this. This is bad. I hope people don't get mad at me. But – We've had to actually throw ours out in the backyard, and I've walked over and locked the door before. And they'll come up there and knock on them. No, you're not coming in. Stay out. You're staying outside. So uh, you just got to keep them active. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think having – I just think as a – based on my experience, having kids involved in athletics is just a great way to keep your kids, um, number one, out of, out of other activities that might not be as beneficial, but it teaches them about – how to work as a team, how to work hard. Oh, yeah. So many great lessons come from participating in, in youth athletics and in college athletics and beyond. So, Coach, I'm, I want to be respectful of your time, and I don't want to take too much time here, but um, we'll kind of close out here, if you would, on your perspective for the future. Um, when will college sports get back to normal? Do you think 
the vaccine is is the is going to be the ultimate test for us before we can get back to normal. Or what's your perspective? Well, I don't. I, I, let's just say this: this fall of 2020, I don't think we'll see normal. We're not seeing normal now. So we know. I know the Big Ten. I, I didn't know that until you told me. It sounds like they're getting going again, and the world of sports and the way we go about school today. Um, I think some schools are going back to where they're going back in class now five days a week and they're, they're cutting out the, uh, the online stuff, which I'm not saying that's every school. That's just some schools I've been told here in the last day or two. seems like people are trying to go back to the normalcy part of it. You know, we won't see that now until through Christmas. There'll be some, they'll still be kind of working off like we're doing now. You know, I'm like you, I think, it, I think people need to see that there's some type of medicine, uh, vaccine, whatever it may be that you can go and, and you can prescribe to people. I think that's what we're all waiting on. I, I don't, at this point in time, I don't know what we're going to see any, until then. I don't know what anything is going to be any different, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think we're just learning each day how to cope with it. Universities, different high schools, your household. Uh, unfortunately, it's still out there and people are still testing positive and, and, and it's happening. Um, it does seem like at times the numbers are going in the right direction for us all, but I, I'm with you. I, I just think until we see something that where, you know, it's like going to the doctor for the flu or anything else, they can prescribe something for you. If anything, whether it works fully, it just gives you a sense that, that there's something out there. And right now we don't have that. And then we're just still a lot of unknown. What's going to happen when we do get back into the, you know, January, February, March, that time is the cold weather. I, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. I just, I'm like anybody else. We're just all kind of waiting and see. I feel like we just take one week at a time. Did we make it through this week? How did this place, how did Alabama come out as a whole, as a state? How did Mississippi come out? How, we were all watching that. Obviously, you know, I, I'm not going to get into the political side of things, but there is the, the election coming up and, you know, is one side going to treat it different than the other side? And, and you know, that's just one thing I think we need to pay attention to. I think people need to, you know, if you're not paying attention to that, you need to. And, you know, and you you got your right to vote the way you want. But I think, if anything, get out and at least vote, if anything. And we'll see how it all plays out. I, I, I don't I don't know. Um, I just, I'm like you and everybody else. We all want to get back. I, I walked in this morning. I'm wearing a mask as I entered the building. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, you know, when is this going to stop? Will we just go back to the the normal, you know, the everyday just living like we used to? So I still think we're a ways off. And I, I just don't know if we're going to get these answered before January. I, maybe I'm hoping once we get into January and February, we're here we go back. I think anything, we just want, uh, uh, you know, at some point, when we kick back off in January, February, March, I hope it's not that long. I hope it's sooner before that. But we just want to get back to some type of here. We're back to normalcy and let's get it right. The first time let's don't, let's don't miss on it here two or three times before we get it right. So I'm a graduate of the university of North Alabama. I'm a UNA football fan. So I, I, I personally am very excited about the move up to division one and the future of UNA football. But for our viewers, just in closing here, um, Let's assume we're going to be back to normal next year. Yeah. Why should an average football fan be excited about UNA football and its move up to Division One football? Well, that's a good question. I, you know, here, we're going through, this will be year three of the transition. 2021 will be the year four. And then we're competing uh, for like everybody else for champ, conference championships and stuff like that. But uh, listen, Division one football, and I love Division two. I, I, I lived Division two football for years. I've been on plenty of those teams that won numerous games, and and there's days I miss Division two. It was it's kind of more the simple life, I guess you could say. A lot of things happen in the Division one level. It's a lot of things to do with budget and money, and it's moving fast. But uh, listen, just like what you mentioned a while ago, we're playing BYU. Uh, we're playing Southern Mississippi. Um, we've already played you know, uh, North Dakota State to the world. And, and you know, just the re rekilling the, the Jacksonville State rivalry again. And now we're on a – I'm not saying we're there yet. I don't want people to take this the wrong way. I'm not saying we're on an even playing field because Jacksonville State's already been there and they're already Division One, But we're going to be there. And so it's going to be fun playing those guys over the years to come. And listen, you know, down the road you're going to – you know, whether it's at Brawley or a brand new stadium, we'll see whatever comes of that. But uh, it's going to be neat to know that Jacksonville State's going to be inside this stadium this year. I know the fan 
there's a limitation and it's only going to be half capacity. But the fact that moving forward in the future, we're going to have teams like that showing up in the area. I think it's just overall, it, it's, you know, it's like our baseball team went and played Ole Miss last year. And they, that, that was a neat deal. And, um, you know, we got Memphis coming up in the future on the schedule. We got North Carolina one day coming up on the schedule. I think Florida State. I just think it's uh, it's just uh, as we move and grow into the Division One, it's just going to be the. I mean, listen, let's just be honest. I mean, when you play schools of those statue, you know, those names, the Florida State, BYU's of the world, it draws your attention. And you know, uh, we live in a world where everybody's on social media. Everybody wants to see the bigger and the better thing. And when you play teams like that, it draws attention. It draws crowds and. You, you've been growing up your whole life watching the Ole Miss and Alabamas of the world. Now you may get to play some of these schools. And, you know, my job here in North Alabama is just get us. It's not just about that, though. It's about getting us to compete uh, within our own league, our own conference, the FCS league, uh, where if you know, if you've been keeping up with that, North Dakota State's kind of the Alabama of FCS. They've won seven of the last eight championships. And uh, it's good football. And we want to, we hope we're competing in 2022 for the Big South Conference Championship. We're ready to get to that point. We got to get through this transition. Uh, I never thought I'd sign up to be coach of a transition and a pandemic all in the same year. But we're, uh, we're getting through it. Uh, I, I, man, President Kitts, Mark Linder, and the, the university, I think, are doing the things the right way. Uh, we, we just, we just got to get through what we're going through right now. We got to get back to some normalcy and then finish out the transition. Uh, and just hang in there. It's tough. Listen, I know as a fan, you're sitting there going, when's this transition going to be over? When can we – well, think of how these players feel. Think about us as coaches. We feel that way too. And, you know, it gets it gets a little wary on you when you know that sometimes you go out and you're playing a game and it don't count towards something. And But, but we're almost there, Coach. We're, we're almost, almost there. At an yeah. exciting point. Uh, boy, talking with Mark Linder, your athletic director, with the some of the big basketball games that have already yeah. been played both by – yeah. Um, by our women and by our men's teams. Um, it's an exciting time for UNA athletics. And uh, boy, just to have somebody like you in charge of our football team, uh, folks, you. one of the up and coming young football coaches in this part of the country. Um, Thank you. Coach Willis is, is really doing an outstanding job um, taking UNA, the University of North Alabama, from Division II, Division I. Um, uh, this transition has been exciting to watch and what you're doing with the team. Coach, I appreciate your time. I want to close here by saying, once again, um, young people, parents out there, if you have not visited the University of North Alabama, you're making a mistake. It is one of the most beautiful campuses in the state. It's in an exciting part of the state, the Shoals area, uh, with the recording studios and uh, some wonderful restaurants. Uh, Tennessee River is beautiful in that part of the state, um, and you have small classrooms. Um, during my time at UNA, I don't think I ever had more than uh, 25, 26 students in a class. There weren't any big lab classes um, run by Dr. Ken Kitts, who just does a great job. And of course, we focus now on the athletic program and the excitement concerning the athletic program. Um, visit the University of North Alabama, learn more about it and the opportunities um, provided at the University of North Alabama. And one more time, um, this episode is brought to you by the Bonnie and Bose Law Offices. We have offices across Alabama, across Mississippi, and we're in the Knoxville area in Tennessee. If you're having financial problems, and a lot of people are today, don't just sit back and let things happen to you. I do like coaches said with football, be proactive, get out there, adjust. Our attorneys are offering absolutely free initial consultations where you can learn your options. Uh, you can do it uh, by telephone, by video, however it's comfortable for you. Uh, we want you to feel safe and we want you to feel like you've got good advice going forward. Um, but on behalf of Coach Willis, on behalf of the attorneys at the Hunt Lotus Law Offices, uh, good luck to each of you. God bless. And Royal Lions, Coach Willis. Royal Thanks, for, thanks right. for being with us today. Thank you, folks.